Yo, what's going on guys? Welcome back to the channel. And today I wanted to talk about a focal length that I have absolutely fallen in love with over the past five or six years. Now, throughout my career, there's been several different lenses that I've really, really loved. It was 50 millimeters for a while. It was 85 millimeters for a while. And I was shooting all these really cool photos of coffee. And there was a few periods where I was almost exclusively shooting with zooms because of their versatility. But throughout my career, there's really been one lens that I have used extensively throughout my entire career. And that is the 35 millimeter prime lens. I can shoot absolutely anything on this lens. Landscapes, portraits, automotive, interiors, architecture, street photography, travel photography. I think the 35 millimeter focal length can really do it all better than any other lens on the market. In this video, I wanna talk about why I think this focal length is so incredibly special and also just show you guys how I've been using this lens in my work over the past five or six years. Now, I'm not gonna be talking specifically about this lens. This is the 35 millimeter F1.4. Or G Master by Sony. I think it's one of the best lens ever created, but I'm not gonna be talking specifically about lenses, but rather the 35 millimeter focal length, the angle of view of a 35 millimeter lens. But if you guys do wanna see all the gear that I use and recommend for photographers, including a detailed buying guide for three different price points, you guys can check out my free photography gear guide. I'll put a link down in the description and I hope you guys enjoy. And also if you guys are just getting into photography and you can't quite nail down some of those basics, check out my photography essentials class. It's a crash course on the basics of photography. I'll put a link down in the description and I hope you guys enjoy that too. Okay, so why am I so obsessed with the 35 millimeter focal length? I talk about it all the time and I use it more than any other lens. And I think the reason for that is very simple. I think 35 millimeters is the sweet spot for photography. It's right on the cusp of being a wide angle lens like 28 millimeters or 24 millimeters and also right on the cusp of being a more zoomed in lens like 50 millimeters. Now this means it's wide enough to show the scene around our subject and give our subject context, but not too wide to the point where it's distorting our image and it's making it very difficult for us to keep that composition clean, which is something that I really like to do as a photographer. I'm really drawn to these kind of cleaner, more organized compositions. And when I'm shooting wider than 35 millimeters, I find it really difficult to capture these clean and organized compositions. And if you guys watched my last video on 24 millimeters, you would know that because I talked about this idea in detail. But at the same time, I do wanna show a lot of the scene around my main subject because it really helps tell a much more meaningful story about the person or the place or the thing that you're photographing. And it's really difficult to show a lot of the scene with a 50 millimeter or an 85 millimeter lens. And that's why I think 35 millimeters is right in the sweet spot. It's wide enough to the point where we can show a lot of that scene and tell a more meaningful story with our photography, but not too wide to the point where our composition looks overly busy or overly complicated. And it's hard to eliminate certain things from our composition, which is much easier to do with a lens that's a little bit more zoomed in. With a 35 millimeter lens, I can shoot photos that give my subject context without being too busy. And I think that's why it really is the sweet spot for storytelling with photography. Now, because 35 millimeters is so balanced, it makes this lens incredibly versatile. And like I said earlier on in this video, I shoot absolutely everything with this focal length. I've shot some of my favorite landscape photos of all time. I've shot contextual portraits that show the scene. I think it's the best lens available for street photography and also just documenting moments in your everyday life at home or at a family friend's house or just documenting your travels in general. And the 35 millimeter focal length is actually one of the main reasons why I decided to pick up the Fuji X100V and now the Fuji X106 is because it has a 35 millimeter full frame equivalent. This is a 23 millimeter F2, which is a 35 millimeter equivalent on a full frame camera, which is, as you guys know, a focal length that I love. And ever since I bought this camera, I've been shooting even more with the 35 millimeter focal length. And I have captured some really amazing photos with this little camera. Um, um, and I attribute a large part of that to the 35 millimeter lens that is on this thing. But the versatility argument is quite common with the 35 millimeter lens. And I'm sure you guys have already heard that before. So I wanna give you another reason why I love the 35 millimeter focal length so much. And that's because it's incredibly easy to understand both for you as the photographer, but also the viewer of your photos as well. 35 millimeters looks incredibly close to real life, how we view the world through our eyes on a daily basis. And this means it's much easier for you to start to envision the world through that 35 millimeter focal length lens. When I'm going out and I'm shooting, I pretty much envision the world 
through a 35 millimeter focal length at this point in my career. And that's because I shoot with this focal length so much on an everyday basis. And I think it's important for us to start to develop that relationship with the focal length because it makes it a lot easier for us to really envision our shots before we actually take the photo. And when I'm out and about and I'm walking around and I wanna shoot something, I already kind of have a really good idea of how that photo is going to look if I shot it with a 35 millimeter lens because that's the focal length that I default to. And I think that's a lot harder to do with a more zoomed in lens or a wider lens because of the fact that they don't look anything close to how we actually view the world as human beings. But like I alluded to earlier, I also think that photos shot at 35 millimeters just make more sense to the viewer as well, simply because they look a lot more like real life. When you shoot a photo at 35 millimeter, it doesn't necessarily scream, hey, look, I'm a photo like it would if you shot a photo at 16 millimeters or at 200 millimeters. And I think at this day and age, people are much more drawn to authenticity and real looking photos, things that would actually happen or actually exist and look real to the human eye. And I think that's one of the beauties of a 35 five millimeter lens. And yes, this means we might not get as much wow factor in our photos like we would if we shot a photo at an ultra wide or an ultra zoomed in focal length, but I think there's a lot of beauty to keeping things realistic and also quite an interesting challenge for us as well. So I think I've made myself pretty clear by this point as to why I think the 35 millimeter focal length is so great for photography. But for all those reasons that I just listed, I also think it's fantastic for video. And as a YouTuber, as a photographer, I'm shooting just as much video as I'm shooting photos as well. And the 35 millimeter focal length, in my opinion, is also perfect for video. And I'm using this lens so much, both for my studio work, filming in here, but also when I'm filming vlogs or I'm filming cinematic shots when I'm out and about, the 35 millimeter focal length lens just works perfectly for video. But there is a lot more that goes into making these videos as well. And if you guys have created videos in the past, you already know this, but we need lots to cut our videos, sound effects, we might need stock footage, transitions, title screens, and of course, music. And instead of sourcing these things from all corners of the internet and wasting all my time doing that, I get all of my digital assets for my videos from one place, the sponsor of today's video, Motion Array. Because instead of spending hours trying to source all these different assets from all corners of the internet, Motion Array offers unlimited creative downloads for an affordable monthly subscription. Now, one of my favorite assets right now are these real film transitions by Dynamite to add just a nice touch of spice here and there throughout this video. You guys might've noticed them before each title screen, but if these aren't your vibe, there are thousands of other motion graphics that you can choose from as well. Seriously, there's over 16,000 pages of motion graphics templates that you can download and use in your videos. This is hands down one of the best online resources available for video creators. Now, Motion Array is constantly updating as well, and they recently launched 50 new plugins that integrate directly into your video editing software to help power your edits with many more on the way as well. All you have to do is install the plugin and you have a ton of creative effects built directly into your video editing software, whether you're editing in Final Cut Pro like me, DaVinci Resolve, or Adobe Premiere Pro. Now, if you use my link down in the description, you'll get two months free. And with that, you can download and try out as many different digital assets that you want. Whether you're after lots to color grade your videos, royalty-free music, stock photos and videos, or sound effects to help spice up your project, Motion Array has everything that that you need to create compelling videos in one simple place. Once again, there's a link down in the description and that will give you two months free. So thank you so much Motionary for sponsoring this video. Now let's get back to the 35 millimeter lens. So, so far in this video, I've talked about why I think the 35 millimeter focal length is so great, but I haven't really talked about specific cases where I think the 35 millimeter focal length really, really shines. And the first thing I wanna talk about is portrait photography. And I think a lot of us, when we just start out with photography, one of the first things that we'll read online is the best focal length for portraits is something like an 85 millimeter, because at 85 millimeters, you no longer have any distortion in that photo. And it's the most pleasing focal length for portraits. And I think for headshots, that is absolutely true. For headshots, I think an 85 millimeter lens is fantastic. But for everyday portraits where you're actually trying to say something about that person or you're trying to tell a deeper story with that photo, nothing beats a 35 millimeter lens in that scenario simply because once again, a 35 millimeter lens allows us to show the scene around that person. And when you're shooting with something like an 85, you're really limiting your field of view to just the person and not so much of what's happening around them. And when you include the scene around your subject, while it might make it a more difficult portrait to capture because you have a lot more compositional elements to pay attention to, the story 
the impact that I can have on your story is massive because you can really incorporate that scene around your subject to help tell a deeper story about that subject that you're photographing. And even when I'm shooting with something like an 85 millimeter lens, I find that I'm backing up really far so I can still include things around my subject to help tell that more meaningful story. So if you're just starting out in photography and you've read online that the best focal length for portraits is 85 millimeters and above, I urge you to really try out a wider angle lens like 35 millimeter and challenge yourself to incorporate the scene around your subject to help tell a deeper story about the person or the thing that you're photographing. If you guys wanna see some of my favorite portrait shoots that I've done with this lens, check out my video on creative portrait photography. Me and my roommate Kelsey went out to an epic location here in Bali and we shot through sunset and I was pretty much shooting with this lens the whole time. I did bring my 50 and my 85 out as well, but I found that the photos from the 35 just were the most pleasing, uh, the most engaging, and they told the most stories. So I highly recommend checking out that video as well as a video that I did with Anchor on commercial photography. I will link that up there as well. Now, the last thing I wanna mention about the 35 millimeter focal length is just the history behind this lens. There have been so many amazing photographers throughout the ages that have used primarily a 35 millimeter focal length. And I think by now, a lot of us see this and we think of a very classic and traditional focal length. And I would definitely agree with that. Some of the most famous street and documentary photographers of all time have used this lens to great effect. And I think the street photography setting, which is something that I engage in often, and I'm starting to engage in more and more as I grow as a photographer, because I just love the act of going out and, and shooting in a city and finding things that are beautiful. Uh, the 35 millimeter focal length is really perfect for that because of the fact that it's so versatile in a setting like a city, no matter the style of photography that you're after. If you wanna focus on people and you wanna focus on documenting a scene and showing something realistic, 35 is great for that. Or if you're an environmental street photographer like me and you go out in cities looking for light, shapes, color, or just things that are beautiful and aesthetic that you wanna capture with your camera, the 35 millimeter lens really does allow you to do that. It is absolutely classic. There's been so many great photographers that have used it specifically in the street photography realm. Um, and when I'm shooting street, 35 millimeters, it's not even an argument for me. I put this on my camera, I go outside and I almost always walk away with photos that I'm really proud of. And if you guys do wanna see a video where I take this lens, I went to Bangkok um, and I shot almost exclusively with this lens in Bangkok for an entire weekend. I'll put a link up there. You guys can check out that video as well. But I think by now you guys know that I really do love the 35 millimeter focal length. And I hope this video at least encourages you or motivates you or inspires you to give it a shot. If you have a zoom lens, lock it off at 35, go out and shoot for a week with just that 35 millimeter focal length because you're going to get the same effect as shooting with an actual prime lens um, or if you are in the market for a new prime try and go for a 35. It really has changed my work in a positive way because I used to shoot zoomed in so much, but once I found the 35 and I kind of got a little bit more comfortable with it, it really has impacted my work in an incredibly positive way. It's challenged me and I've captured some of my favorite images of all time with this focal length. But I wanna know what you guys think. What is your favorite focal length? Do you think 28 millimeter is the best or 40 millimeter or 50 millimeter? I've been hearing a lot about 28 millimeter focal length as well as 40 millimeter. And these are focal lengths that I do really wanna try try out a little bit more, but this lens has been great to me. Um, I love the look that it gives my photos and I hope you guys can give it a shot. But that's all for this video and I appreciate you guys watching to the end. So thank you so much Motion Array for sponsoring this video and I will catch you guys again very soon in the next one.